weather gets colder, it is time for the cold and flu season to begin. Natural health expert Bryce Wild is here to bust some of the common myths. I am staying healthy. So far, so good. good. But, you know, we are sort of informed by so many myths out there when it comes to this time yes. of year. Yeah. And everyone has they a persist. different thing to say about why you've gotten sick. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what's really giving you the cold right now. You've got a few stats for us off the top. I do, and it's going to be a doozy unfortunately Ooh, so season. how we know this yeah so researchers track the viruses cold and flu viruses and particularly I focus on the flu from the east mm -hmm. uh, uh, southern eastern part of the world yeah. over around the globe to the west that's how we know actually how to create the next flu vaccine so that Got trend it. happens every year goes around the world like that this year was one of the worst years on record for Australians mm. so we can brace ourselves mm -mm. and they have a specific you know focus on the h3n2 viral strain so they're working really hard to make that a match with this year's cold and flu, okay. uh, or the, uh, the flu vaccine, rather. So, yes. yeah, brace yourselves. And these are all the things, uh, you know, today we're going to talk about things you can do to make yourself healthier, but first with the myths. For sure. And, th and that's a scientific thing, yep. you know, tracking uh, flu strains. Right. These things are less scientific. Like, who has ever heard this? Feed a cold, starve a fever. We've all heard it. And it persists, right? It's a okay. myth. Uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be curious to know what you think. I'm not really sure. Not I don't. Sure. I, I, I think I don't believe most of the myths. Yeah. I would say that this is a myth. So it, it is a myth. It's right? a myth. So you know, and it's and it's just gone on for hundreds of years. So right. we didn't, here's the deal: trust your intuition. Yes. Right. If you're hungry eat but don't eat a massive meal yeah. right yeah so whether it's a flu or cold typically if you have a true bona fide flu and you know you do right. it's that deep achy bory mm. pain with high fever you know if you're starting to feel like you have an appetite you're probably on your road to recovery that's right now here's what you do want to avoid though uh -huh. and that's dairy so uh -huh. any dairy cheese and milk and the reason is is because it actually increases mucus that's right mucus forming and we've all experienced that drink milk mm. and you all of a sudden have this bit of phlegm you know when you're trying to fight off a cold or a virus a, a flu for that matter mm -hmm. you're already producing a lot of mucus so yeah. adding that just like you know it's it's a tiring job for the body to con continuously produce that and expel it from the body yeah and it's gross it, it, well, right you know <laughs> you're not trying to create more of right. that stuff yeah. <laughs> going through a box of Kleenex as it is <laughs> right? yeah. yeah okay let's talk uh, so avoiding dairy is is something you should do. Chicken Absolutely. soup. Does that help Chicken when you have a cold? You know, uh, so there is really good research when yes. you include the entire chicken. So true oh. chicken broth. Why? Why? Because of the bone marrow. So okay. in the bone marrow, there's activating constituents, ingredients that literally help to boost the immune system and the okay. white blood cells. So we're driving from that. So, you know, chicken broth that you buy at the store or out of a can that doesn't actually have the whole chicken in the preparation, nah. Uh, mm. But here's how you boost this, by the way. Yeah. Add turmeric to your chicken soup. This is like the cure-all, That is. Man. It's an anti-inflammatory so anti immune boosting. So to your chicken That's soup, add either fresh turmeric or uh, powdered turmeric, and you're on your uh, way to a speedier recovery. Equally as good as the fresh stuff? Yeah. In yeah. my opinion, if you, get okay. the, if you get the organic stuff, absolutely it is. And, okay. you know, or again, this is a really beautiful flavor. People aren't used to doing this, but you can find this more and more now at your, your grocery store oh, yeah. in the fresh produce section. Grate it up, put it in. Then you'd want to strain out mm -hmm. the, you know, the turmeric's a little bit of a pungent flavor if you left it in there. But the active ingredients, curcumin, by the way, is the active ingredient, yep. will get into the soup and that will speed up recovery. So good for you. Yep. Okay, how about this one? Get lots of rest when you're feeling ill. Do not exercise. <laughs> People so, say this all the time, like right. you need to slow down, you're sick, do not work out. It's, it's a bit of both. It's a bit of a myth and here's why. Mm -hmm. And again, it's intuition, so listen to your body. So yeah. when you have a bona fide flu, I don't want you going out there, no one does. Yeah. I don't want you going out there and running a marathon, obviously, or <laughs> right. hitting the gym. It's not a good thing. In you, fact- You mostly wouldn't even be able to. No, right. Because you know, so, if you have a flu, like right. your body is actually hurting you. Right. You want to rest. You do want So again, so you're not lifting weights. But if it's a cold, right, or a mild, you know, you're recovering from the flu, go yeah. out for that walk. Mm -hmm. You know, go out for, do what you feel you're able to do. Now, increasing heat too much, especially when you have a fever, is never a good thing. Right. So obviously check your temperature. If it's become normal, then you want to do some of that, you know, yoga, stretching, Pilates, walking. Yes. That actually will help to pump the lymph, which uh -huh. is within our muscles, surrounding our, and the muscles that's the only way your lymph actually move, and that will expel the garbage yes. after that sort of post-viral recovery mode. That will expel and again speed up healing time. I so agree with that 100%. Listen to your body. Yeah. I say neck up. I'm okay to work out. Right. If it's down here, maybe not. Easy. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it easy. Yep. Uh, cover your mouth with your hand when you cough. So we can't get enough of this one. This is absolute. You know, it, it, so do not do it. Right? <laughs> it's the Howie <laughs> Mandel. How you doing? Yeah, exactly. Right? And stop picking your nose and stop putting your fingers in your eyes. And we all see you if we're driving. You know, we see. 
see you. I kind of did that before the yeah. show, but yeah, oh, don't goodness. do so it. Don't, don't do rub it. it. And here's a couple of tricks, by the way. It's in your sleeve. We know that. Yes. And there's a right and a wrong way to blow your nose. Okay. okay. So blowing both nostrils at once literally can create a, a sinus regurgitation. <gasps> so that's not good. So one nostril at a time. And really? I think most people realize, yeah, that's actually probably what I do do. Yeah. Otherwise, oh, you're really okay. pushing that bacteria up into your sinus cavity. I think I might have been doing it the wrong way. <laughs> uh, this is a big one that we need to get to. Don't go out with wet hair or cold weather or being cold can make you sick. Yeah. Or you will get sick if you don't wear a coat, a scarf, or gloves. Do okay, you, as a know? mother, yeah. I say it all the time <laughs> to the kids. Am I a liar? So there is a small caveat, and I'll get to it, but okay. otherwise it's a myth. You don't, okay. you don't get I'm a cold liar. from getting cold. Yeah. And I know this, by the way, so I've been in a, uh, a, a cold sauna, minus 200 degrees. I didn't exit sick. In fact, it actually helps to boost your immune system. Okay. But here's the deal. Scientists at a Yale University have realized that in the nose, which is about two degrees, and especially mine, two degrees less, it's extending from my face <laughs> longer than the average, but two degrees less than the, uh, the core temperature yeah. actually will be a perfect environment for viruses to harbor and thrive and, and, and multiply. Okay. And so that's a higher chance that when you sniff, that it's gonna enter your lung cavity and actually replicate. So you, when your nose isn't particularly cold, mm -hmm. you have a higher p propensity or chance to actually sniff in a virus which will then thrive in the body. So yes, there's a slight caveat to getting cold. Cover your face and neck okay. and that's a good idea. All right, yeah. so I'm not a total liar. Yeah. I'm a little liar. <laughs>